you've got to set goals for yourself, right? Especially if you're a freelancer or a creative. And there are tons of books and TED Talks and, yes, YouTube videos full of people telling you how to set goals, how to stick to them, how to make sure you're on track and blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. None of that stuff has ever really worked for me. That's not how I stay productive. So, Today, we're going to talk about how to not have goals and why that might be a much better choice for you. And to do this, we need to go back to my hometown. So, when I was 18 years old, I'd finished college, but I didn't have a job. So I applied for unemployment benefit, the dole. I was still living with my parents, and I was supposed to be looking for a job. That's certainly what I told the government I was doing. But I wasn't doing that. Instead, for six months, every day, I got on my unicycle, I know, and I rode to exactly this spot in my local park, and I practiced my tricks. Juggling, balancing, every kind of circus trick that it was possible for me to learn on my own with props that I could put in a backpack. I practiced and practiced until it got dark and then I hopped back on my unicycle and rode home to the confused and disapproving words of my parents. Every single day, for six months, until they stopped my doll. But why? Nobody had a gig waiting for me. Nobody had said that if I got a certain amount of good, there'd be a job to go to. Nobody had ever shown any interest at all in me learning any of these things. In fact, it was the opposite. Most people saw this as strange and odd and of absolutely no use to the rest of my life. So why did I come here every day? Well, Firstly, I didn't really feel like I had much else going on, and also, if I'm honest, home wasn't always a very fun place to be, so it is just as valid to be running away from something as it is to be running to something. But mostly, in my heart, for some reason, I decided to go all in on this, even when I didn't really have a concrete idea of what this was. Every day I came to the park, I wasn't just learning circus tricks. I was also learning who I was, who I wanted to be. And, slowly, it was who I became. I thought to myself, well, look, this must be who I am, because here I am every day doing it. Look at the percentage of my day I spend being this. It must be important. It must be me. It's like the writer Annie Dillard says, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. And this was how I wanted to spend my life. I always feel weird when people say I'm productive or motivated. I mean, yeah, sure, I like to make stuff. I'm in this ridiculous position where a small amount of people are interested in what I make, so why would I not want to keep making the best things I can for them? Why would I not be motivated? But still... I don't really have goals. I'm not chasing anything. And that's become more clear to me as I've got older. It's about the journey, the process of making and learning rather than the result. And that's what it was 35 years ago in this park. It didn't even cross my mind back then that I should have a goal, some kind of marker that if I achieved it would let me say, hey, I did it. I just wanted to learn things and make things and to, I suppose, see where that led. And that's exactly how I still think about my work. Back then, I used to sit on the carpet in front of my TV and watch the Paul Daniels magic show. I'd seen Chris Cremo, Rob Murray, Natalie Ontelin, jugglers with incredible skills and stagecraft, and there they were, on my TV proof that these tricks could, if you were good enough, be something you could make a living out of. Now, I didn't know how to get to where they were, and I thought the chances were slim that I ever would, but they showed me it was possible, and that's all I needed. Decades later, I worked with Paul. He liked my act. He took me aside once during rehearsals for a show we were both in, and he told me that if he still had a show, he'd book me and I had to sneak away to the bathroom to cry. Decades worth of studies have shown that, yes, setting goals does help you work harder, stay focused, but they also stifle creativity, and they make cheating and taking shortcuts more likely. 
Long story short, you might get to where you want to go, but you might end up being a worse person when you get there. Goals are probably generally useful for a lot of people, but I think you've got to be careful that you don't feel that you need to achieve them in order to be happy, to feel validated. That's a trap, and I've known people who have fallen into it. Apart from anything else, usually when you reach a goal, the first thing you see is the next goal. So that might mean you struggle to ever be completely happy with where you are now. My feeling is that it's easy to over-prioritise these markers. And the more you get suckered into doing that, the less you're enjoying the process of creating, of making, of doing that thing that you love. Goals put your focus on outcome when I think it might be healthier to have that focus set on process. If goals work for you, great, but they're not the only way to be motivated. And if you have them, make sure you've chosen what they are and that the place they sit in your head is, well, that would be an interesting, nice thing to achieve rather than if I don't get there by this date, I have failed. Listen, the world is unpredictable and roller coastery. It's more fun and healthier to see where the roller coaster takes you than to try and steer it. Thanks for watching this. I hope you liked it. If you did, then subscribing to this channel, sharing the video, clicking like and leaving a comment all really help small creators like me reach more people. So thanks in advance for doing that. And if you want to come and see what all those months of practicing in the park and the decades I've done since then, then come and see me live. I'm taking my full one-man show to the Edinburgh Fringe and then doing a few dates with it in London. There's a link to mattricardo.com slash live under this video where you can find out more. All of my videos are helped enormously by my supporters over on Patreon, so I'd like to say a big thank you to all of them. It's been a really tough couple of years financially for live performers like me and sign-ups start from just £2 per month. So if you're interested, there's a link to that in the description below as well. Thanks again. See you next time.